I want you to hit me as hard as you can. Six years have passed since Disney's Frozen first put a magical spell over moviegoers, and with that film going on to become the highest grossing animated movie of all time, as well as a marketing juggernaut, it was only a matter of time before The House of Mouse would finally give us a sequel, with Queen Elsa saving the Kingdom of Arendelle from the forces of evil once more in Frozen 2. But long before we saw Disney turn Hans Christian Andersen's tale of the Snow Queen into a box office phenomenon, young audiences were first enchanted by another chilly animated adaptation of a classic children's tale known as the Snowman. When Raymond Briggs' wordless picture book from 1978 was turned into an animated TV special that first aired in Britain in 1982, the result was an instant Christmas classic with both British and American children. Oh god damn it. I'm not reviewing that snowman, am I? Nope. Yes, I'm actually talking about another film adaptation of a far less child-friendly book, which also happens to be named The Snowman. You would be hard-pressed to find an infamously bad movie that had as much going for it as The Snowman did, with the film being based on writer Yo Nesbo's internationally best-selling thriller, which served as the seventh entry in Nesbo's ongoing adventures of Norwegian police detective Harry Hula and the director's chair to originally be filled by the legendary Martin Scorsese, before he decided to executive produce the film instead, with the film now directed by Tomas Alfredsson, the acclaimed Swedish director behind Let the Right One In and Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, and the lead role of Detective Hula, played by two-time Oscar nominee Michael Fassbender. But in spite of all the A-list talent behind this flick, the production of The Snowman was so rushed by Universal Pictures that Tomas Alfredsson was not allowed to film 10-15% to of the movie's screenplay, and the unfinished final product would end up being met with Fredbear box office and abysmally terrible reviews, with many critics deeming it one of the worst movies to come out that year. And since this movie barely escaped being voted onto my top 10 worst movies list two years ago, I'm now going to finally find out for myself how the snowman ended up melting away so quickly. After all, Martin Scorsese ended up putting his name on this movie instead of the Joker movie. And as bad as the snowman may have turned out, we all know that Joker ended up being nothing more than an unmitigated failure. Send in the clown. First, it's time for us to demonstrate that love is not an open door, but rather an open beer, as we drink the melted remains of Olaf the Snowman so that we can play the awfully good drinking game. Take a shot or drink every time you see a beautiful wide shot of the snowy Norwegian landscape, as our film opens up with a flashback of a young boy and his mother being visited at their cabin by the boy's Uncle Jonas, who helps his nephew study for his history test by throwing coffee beans at his mom every time the boy gives a wrong answer. On what date did the Norwegian Parliament hold its first election since the war? August 12th, 1945. You have to help him more. And if he gets an F on that exam, then next time I'm going to start using Keurig pods! And to add to this weirdness, the boy starts building a snowman afterwards, and comes inside from the cold only to find his mother and uncle doing the dirty. I'm going to tell your wife that he's your son. And then she can tell the rest of your family. Well, how about that? I did not know that Norway also had a South. My uncle is my daddy. And as the boy's father leaves his secondary family behind for good, the mother and son pursue Jonas in their car, only for the boy's distraught mother to drive the car off the road and onto a frozen lake, with the son leaving the car before it breaks through the ice, just in time to see his mom kill herself. Mom! Mom! No! Goodbye. But before we find out whether that kid ended up in the same mental ward as Michael Myers and Billy Chapman, we instead cut to present day Norway, where we're introduced to our lead character, Detective Harry Hula, played by Michael Fassbender, as he wakes up in the middle of a children's playground after another one of his many alcoholic benders. However, the detective's alcoholism will be the least of his problems, because although this character's last name in the books is supposed to be pronounced as Hula, the filmmakers have decided that his name should be pronounced just like it looks. Harry Ho. <coughs> Harry Ho. 
<laughs> Great, hurry home. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't take your suspense thriller seriously when I'm supposed to be rooting for a character whose name evokes the image of an unshaven sphincter. God forbid that his middle name begins with an S, Harry S. Hole, as played by Michael F. Aspender. When Detective Harry Hole <coughs> arrives at the police station, he opens his mail to find a letter from an unnamed sender who says he's been secretly following around the detective and now plans to murder a college professor named Birta Becker, with the killer following behind Becker's car all the way to her house so that he can take her life. But not before the killer leaves his signature in front of Birta Becker's house in the form of a snowman. <laughs> Again, I am sorry, but I really cannot take your suspense thriller seriously when your killer signs off his murders by building a goddamn snowman. And not even a scary looking snowman like Jack Frost, but rather a snowman that manages to look stupider than the Michael Keaton Jack Frost. Hell, this shit looks like if Bonnie from Toy Story had rebuilt Forky into a snowman. Carry me? No. The next day, Harry gets acquainted with a new recruit at his police station named Katrina Bratt played by Rebecca Ferguson, who happens to be assigned to the case of the snowman killer's latest victim. And as Katrina interviews the next door neighbor, Harry goes downstairs to talk to Beerta Becker's grief-stricken daughter, who wears a donkey mask to get ready for that pet cemetery audition. <coughs> Hello, Mr. Donkey. Donkey! Oh, how sweet of him to put a smile on that girl's face, even when her mother has likely been gutted like a pig. He's just like Patch Adams, except he's a cop. And after looking through the files of the snowman killer's other missing victims, Katrina tells Harry that she's figured out the killer's motive. Annie Quayle. Six years ago, she went missing. And the day she vanished, it was snowing. Now about to Becca, the night she disappeared. Snowing. I think it's the falling snow that sets the killer off. Well, I certainly can understand wanting to kill somebody after having to shovel out your driveway for the 20th time this winter, but that does not excuse you to actually kill people. Meanwhile, Harry is also maintaining a close relationship with his artist ex-girlfriend Raquel, played by Charlotte Gainsbourg, who's now dating a respected surgeon named Matthias, while Harry serves as a father figure for Raquel's teenage son, Oleg, by taking the boy out on the town for his birthday to see a rock concert. What's the, the big surprise? Let's find out. Someone at work got me the tickets. <laughs> yes, it's none other than Screamin' Baldy performing his smash hit single, I Just Stepped on a Lego. And just wait until you hear his upcoming Christmas album with Yoko Ono. <laughs> But Harry has to leave the concert early after he and Katrina receive a missing persons call for a woman named Sylvia Otterson. Her husband specifically asked for you. Only to find Miss Otterson, played by Chloe Sevigny, alive and well inside of her barn. Who's missing? Sylvia Otterson. I'm Sylvia Otterson. Well, hey, it's good to see that the Swiss Miss girl is doing really well in her adulthood. But just as the detectives head back to the station, that's when the snowman killer makes his move on Sylvia and knocks her out with an injection of anesthetic before pulling out a wire fastening harness that he uses to cut off her head. Ha, huh, you see, because she chops off chicken's heads and she just got her head chopped off, it's symbolism. So Harry and Katrina are called back to the house and once again find out that Sylvia is alive and well. Or is she? I'm Anna Peterson. So is my sister. We're twins. Dun, 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 dun. But don't worry about Sylvia's twin sister, because this will end up being the first and last time this entirely pointless character will appear in our film. And if you think that subplot was baffling and pointless, just wait until you see Harry Hole looking through Katrina's evidence folder to read about the previous detective who investigated the snowman killer case nine years earlier, by the name of Gert Rafto, as played by Val Kilmer. Now, at the time of this film's production, Val Kilmer was just treated for a case of throat cancer, which has sadly left him with a swollen tongue. The blood is there, the sweet was for the last. I'm gonna say, uh, scissors. So instead of recasting the part, the filmmakers have decided to redub Kilmer's voice. And while I give Val Kilmer credit for continuing to work in spite of his visibly frail condition, the actor who's been hired to dub his voice sounds nothing like Val Kilmer and more like Jimmy Stewart playing Bane. Well, was your wife seeing anyone? Well, that, that's great news, Frederick. 
I don't know the admitting doctor, but perhaps she was there for an uh, abortion? Well, then I'll come down there with a fucking warrant myself. Then Kilmer's subplot ends with a whimper when we find out he was killed by the snowman killer in a staged suicide, thus marking an anticlimactic ending to Iceman vs. the Snowman. But it's not like Harry Hole is much better at solving this case himself, because not only is Michael Fassbender's performance somehow less enthusiastic than his work in not Dark Phoenix, but his supposedly master detective cannot even pick up on the most obvious of clues. For example, he and Katrina walk into Sylvia Otterson's house to find her stereo playing the 70 synth pop classic, Popcorn, right before Sylvia ends up getting murdered. Later, Harry walks into his apartment to find the guy cleaning the mold out of his apartment dancing to that very same song. Get out. Get out! Now, even Will Ferrell's Sherlock Holmes would be able to deduce that the snowman killer is underneath that hazmat suit. And also, this killer picked a silly novelty song from the 70s as his signature theme. Oh yeah, I'm sure that the popcorn song is gonna go down as one of the most chilling serial killer themes in movie history. the movie's central mystery, it is nothing more than an endless series of red herrings being thrown at the audience to fool them into thinking that this movie is more substantial than it actually is. Especially in the case of our mystery's central suspect, a wealthy businessman named Arve Stope, played by J.K. Simmons, who happens to be one of the few actors attempting a Norwegian accent in this movie and subsequently failing at it. So lovely of you to be here for us. The only winter sports I engaged in were the uphill snow shovel and the 50 meter firewood carry. <laughs> Katrina clues in that Arve Stope is running a Jeffrey Epstein-esque sex trafficking ring with the help of his buddy Edar Vetlison, with Vetlison happening to be an abortion doctor who had previously treated both Beer to Becker and Sylvia Otterson. So when Katrina finds out that Beer to Becker's missing phone has been tracked to Dr. Vetlison's house, she sneaks into the doctor's house hoping to bust this creep for good, only to find that the doctor has had his head blown off by the snowman killer in another stage suicide, in the same manner that Val Kilmer supposedly killed himself. And did I forget to mention that Harry Hole finds out that Rebecca Ferguson has secretly been Val Kilmer's grown-up daughter, seeking revenge on J.K. Simmons for killing her father? Layla Olsen and Arvis Stoke were having an affair, and that's the last thing my father was investigating before he got killed. Vettelson was his pimp, and they were both in Bergen when the murders started. Oh, I did forget to mention that? That's because nobody, nobody cares! Get off me, you fucking drunk! <sighs> I'm a drunk. Like your father. Huh, yeah, I call bullshit on your so-called alcoholism, Harry asshole, because we've only seen you pass out from boozing two times in this whole damn movie, and it has never been brought up again. You're less Joe Don Baker as Mitchell, and more Dennis the Menace Mitchell. Maybe this will bring your balls back. <laughs> So with Katrina suspended from the police force, she goes it alone to a party that Arve Stope is holding to celebrate his bid to have the city of Oslo, Norway, selected to host the World Winter, uh, not the Olympics. With Katrina exploiting the sleazy tycoon's sexual appetite so that she can come out to his hotel room and catch him red-handed. Mr. Stope wanted me to let you know how much I enjoyed your conversation. Uh, yeah, JK, can you not creepily stand behind that dresser and peep on this woman? You're kind of killing the mood. And just as Katrina prepares to entrap Arve Stope by having her police camera placed on the hotel room shelf, <laughs> yeah, like he wouldn't end up noticing that shit, that's when the snowman killer strikes once again and ends up taking Katrina's life, despite the fact that this character is supposed to end up staying alive through the next three Harry Hula books. But then again, maybe that 10 to 15% they didn't get to film from the screenplay included a scene where she came back as Katrina the White. So now that we've established that our killer is not J. Jonah Jameson, who is the secret identity of the Spider-Man? Uh, I mean, the Snowman. Is it me? Is it you? Who knows? It's you! Can you guess who is the mystery? Is it Beer Becker's sad sack of a husband? No. You're history. Can you guess who? Is it Sylvia Otterson's twin sister? No. Farewell. Can you guess who till you have your clue? Is it Toby Jones as Val Kilmer's ex-partner, who's in this movie simply because he's always known for playing bad guys? No. Oh, I see it's not you. Can you guess who? I know, it's Raquel's plastic surgeon boyfriend, Matthias, who's the killer.
Oh, thank goodness I changed my answer. I was originally going to say it was the girl with the donkey mask who did it. So Harry corners Matthias in his old childhood cabin, where the snowman killer has held both Raquel and Oleg hostage, so that Harry can save their lives by playing a special Norwegian family murder edition of the Family Feud! What's going to happen when Josephine Becker finds out he isn't her father? She'll still love him. Wrong answer. Uh... Let's try again. Was it right for Sylvia Ottersen? to kill her unborn child simply because she couldn't keep track of who the father was. That was her choice. Too short. Aw oh, shit dude, you suck at this game. At this rate you're never gonna make it to fast money. Last question. This boy, who doesn't even know who his father is, does his mother deserve to live? Why don't you ask him? Oh yeah, good answer! Good answer! <laughs> Uh, yeah, I would like to note here that the movie was originally edited by the Oscar-winning editor of Platoon, and then re-edited in post-production by Martin Scorsese's legendary longtime editor, Thelma Schoonmacher. And yet, our final product looks like it was actually edited by throwing the film into a blender. So now Harry and Matthias run out to have their final dramatic confrontation out on a frozen lake, where Harry tries to play on Matthias' traumatic memories of his childhood. You've been wrong the whole time. And Matthias reacts in kind by falling into the ice like a dumbass, just like Martin Freeman at the end of the first season of Fargo. Well, it's rare that you see a cinematic detective who ends up winning over the killer simply because of a stupid stroke of luck. But looks like your case has finally been closed, Harrison Hole. Now it's time to meet your new partner who's just transferred over from America. I'm Lieutenant Frank Drebin. Police Squad. Be sure to tune in next week for another exciting story from the files of Police Squad. I can understand now why Martin Scorsese has been railing against all these superhero movies and the current studio system in general, because it's ridiculous that Universal would release this unfinished train wreck of a movie in theaters, thinking that Harry Hole would have any chance of becoming the next big cinematic detective series. But I don't think that letting Scorsese or Tomas Alfredson finish this movie off would have made it that much better. Because the film as it stands is a gloomy slog to get through, with a flimsy mystery made up of pointless subplots and a lifeless lead character you can't care about. So even though it's got no shortage of talent behind and in front of the camera, the snowman has as much of a lifespan as an actual snowman in the summertime. But hey, if the girl with the dragon tattoo franchise can get a shot at a reboot movie, then maybe one winter's day, the snowman will return to terrorize the Norwegian countryside once again. But he waved goodbye, saying, don't you cry. I'll be back to kill deadbeat mothers and then chop off their heads. And on the nudie watch, aside from some shirtless fastbender, all you get to see here is one quick flash of boob from one of J.K. Simmons's trafficked prostitutes. Although we do get to see a pretty steamy dry humping scene between Michael Fassbender and Charlotte Gainsbourg, as Harry's ex-girlfriend tries reigniting his passion by cranking up the sensual sounds of Seeger Rose. Eh, I don't know. I think you could find a more sensual band that you two could dry hump to. Oh yeah, now we have officially arrived in Boner City. Population Harry S. Hole. The S stands for sphincter. On the enjoyableness continuum scale from Boulder Bruce, The Snowman is the most baffling mystery movie to come out of Hollywood since Color of Night, but without the added benefit of Bruce Willis hanging dong, and melts into a puddle of two out of ten. If someone ever asks you, do you want to watch The Snowman? Then you had better answer back with an emphatic, NO! I'm Jesse Shade for JoBlo.com, hoping that you viewers out there end up having another great Thanksgiving dinner this year. And I can think of no better way to kick off the 2019 Christmas season than with a good old-fashioned dance-off! <laughs>